Hello everybody, welcome to another presentation on our nutrition series in metabolic wellness. Today we are going to discuss the third macronutrient, namely fat. Fat, of course, has gotten a bad rap throughout history. However, this has not been justified and you will see why. Fat is required for the production of all your cell membranes. It's the integrity and the structural component of these cell membranes. It selectively lets nutrients into the cell and nutrients out of the cell. Um, it's needed to make bile and bile is secreted by the gallbladder to emulsify and digest fats. It's also needed to make steroids, your steroid hormones, your sex hormones, and vitamin D. You know they say that if your cholesterol level drops before, below 150, you're not going to make any sex hormones and that is the truth. The absorption of vitamins A, D, E, and K depend upon an adequate amount of fat in the body. If you don't have it, these vitamins and nutrients don't get absorbed. Fat is important in temperature regulation and insulation. And as I said, numerous hormones are made from fat. So when energy is required, the body turns to a combination of glucose, which is our simple carbohydrate, and fat to aid in energy requirements and the proper balance is really necessary. So fats are important. Now in the 1980s and 1990s, the war on fat um, was issued, was called, it was a call to arms, low fat this, low fat that, because they thought fat was the culprit in obesity. And actually, as we know now, it wasn't. Sugar was the culprit in obesity. The low fat diet craze was ill-conceived with no evidence to support this thesis. Fat, per se, is not the enemy. Fat is essential to our survival and our health. So let's begin our discussion of fats. Fat is essential to our survival and health, as I mentioned in the introduction. The key is not eliminating fat from the diet, but consuming the right kinds of fat in the correct ratios. Get that, ladies and gentlemen, in the correct ratios. There are three kinds of fat. We have saturated fat. We have polyunsaturated fat and we have monounsaturated fat, and I'll go into each of these. Mono and polyunsaturated fats are not produced by the body, so they must cons be consumed in the diet or taken as a supplement, all right? The two essential polyunsaturated fatty acids are omega-3s and omega-6s. And by the way, when I use the term polyunsaturated, this is a biochemical term actually, which refers to the structure, the biochemical structure of the fat, uh, because all of the um, carbon bonds are not filled in with hydrogen atoms. That's irrelevant to the point in this discussion. The point is that there are two essential polyunsaturated fatty acids, omega-3s and omega-6s. Omega-3s in human beings is often deficient because it's found in limited amounts in most foods. The other problem is that with the processing of foods and fast food restaurants, most of the omega-3s have been leached out of these foods. They aren't very nutrition, nutritious, as you know. The richest sources of omega-3 fatty acids are fatty fish and fish oil, walnuts and other tree nuts, pumpkin seeds, and flaxseed oil. Omega-6 is plentiful in foods such as vegetable oils. Numerous biochemical processes depend on both omega-3s and omega-6, but optimal health depends upon a sufficient quantity of each in the proper ratio. Here's the key to fats, ladies and gentlemen, the proper ratio of omega-6s to omega-3s. Now, omega-3s are important to prevent chronic inflammation, and improved cardiovascular and brain function. I'll repeat that. Omega-3s are important to prevent chronic inflammation and improved cardiovascular and brain function. We're gonna stop here in our introduction. It's like a cliffhanger. If you wanna see what goes on with omega-3s, omega-6s, and the other fatty acids, tune in when we next post uh, Fats Part Two. Thank you very much.